Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1975 Plymouth Duster by AMT Ertl. Now this model kit is out of my own personal collection, however, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And now Mean Mary Jean invites you all the way back to the 1975 Plymouth showroom as we take a look at the 75 Plymouth Duster Hardtop by AMT Ertl. Now this model car was reissued under RC2 in 2004, but it is from an earlier vintage. And as you can see, it is pretty cool. The model builder here painted it in metallic purple. You can see this gigantic Hemi style motor in here with the big intakes and the four barrel carburetors. A pair of four barrels, the big fat hood scoop, and of course our Dukes of Hazard style vector wheels, which again are quite, quite awesome. The Duster is a skill level 2 kit, which is intended for ages 10 and up and requires glue and paint to get the job done. Now to give you all a heads up, I did actually start working on this kit a very long time ago, but there are some really groovy things that I was doing with it, and it is not too far gone. So you can actually see what this kit looked like when it came out factory fresh. So inside the box we have again our Plymouth instructions and you can see the groovy stripes down here from a bygone era possibly in the 70s when this kit first came out. We have our decal sheet which I'll leave a little bit of surprise until the end of the video. Then we've got our body here and our undercarriage. Now, the interior was not painted and done up like this. It was again gray plastic like the rest, but it is groovy, so we'll take a look at that in a little bit. We'll even show the manufacturer the de decal sheets for the interior that I used. Now in a Ziploc bag, we've got some more of the grayish plastic components. There's our engine and whatnot. Then we've got our wheels and tires, our tires and glass and bags, and then our chrome parts tree. Oh, and everything falling off all over the place. So you get a nice idea of what's in this box. Now, in case you're wondering who Mean Mary Jean is, there she is right there in her number one shirt, pointing at our duster. Now, I do believe that she also was the actress that played Dinah Girl in Electric Woman and Dinah Girl. But I'm not sure. You guys might want to look that up. Here's our instructions for 1975 Plymouth Duster Hardtop. And as you can see, they are patterned after one of the earlier releases of the instruction sheets with the nice groovy decal down the side. Our instruction sheet shows our wheel assembly and street racers were quite the popular groovy thing back when this model kit came out. So you've got your Dukes of Hazard style vector wheels in here, narrow ones and deeper ones for the bigger tires in the back. We have a plastic axle that goes through the front wheel do not spin. Be very careful when you're putting this together again. We've got uh, BF Goodrich Radial TA tires for the front and Goodyear's in the back. And then we've got our rear backing wheel plates here as well. There are two engine building choices in this model kit. One is the 360 V8 and the other is the 426 cubic inch Hemi. Now here we have our intake manifold for the 360 with our carburetor going in place as well as our distributor in the back. Then we have our fan with the clutch on it going into our pulleys and belts with the alternator in the back. We have our engine halves and our transmission halves gluing together as a unit with our cylinder heads and our valve covers dropping in place. We have our oil filter on the side as well as our oil pan the front engine cover, and there's the assembly of our belts and pulleys all gluing into place in panel five. Panel six shows the completion of our 360 cubic inch motor with our air cleaner gluing on top of our carburetor. And then we've got our engine block with the manifold gluing onto there, our exhaust headers gluing on the sides, and our starter motor gluing in place by the transmission. Panel seven shows our 426 Hemi going together. We've got the breathers going on the valve covers, as well as our cylinder heads gluing onto our two police engine block, our starter motor gluing on the side, our oil pan, then we've got our front engine cover, our belts, the alternator, 
the fan with the clutch, and our oil filter gluing all into here. Panel 8A shows our custom intake manifold. Our four barrel carburetor glues into place and then you have this nice top that goes on the carburetor. Now for panel B you can have the high rise style intake manifold with our dual carburetors also going in place. Panel 9 shows our choice of intake manifolds and then we've got these two piece headers as well as our transmission gluing up onto our engine. Panel 10 and 11 complete our chassis with our radiator and rad support gluing in place. Our battery will glue on as well as our windshield wiper bottle and a radiator tank overflow right here. And then for our rear chassis we have the metal axles going through these blocks which will go into our rear wheels. We have a one piece differential and spring component which will cover all of this. And then here and here we have optional drag linkages. And for our front piece our wheels will glue into similar blocks in the front. Panel 12A and 12B show our engine installation and what's all involved for each of the different engines. So for panel A we have our 360 engine dropping into place and there is an upper radiator hose which will connect to the radiator and the engine. Here we have our exhaust pipe and as an optional thing if you want the leg pipes on the side this is the little connector piece. And for our big Hemi motor it shows it dropping in place and then these will connect up so that you can connect these to the side pipes. Panel 13 shows our groovy interior going together and you do get a lot of different options. You get the classic 70s CB radio which will glue up under the dash. You also get these chrome instrument clusters which you can glue in on top of the dashboard. A tachometer, our steering wheel with the console, a choice of different shifter levers, and our seats all glue into this interior tub. Panel 14 shows our interior tub going into the body. You also add in your windows and your rear view mirror, your front grille and your bumper, as well as your firewall. Panel 15 shows the completion of our Plymouth Duster. And there are a lot of optional components on this kit, but if you are building it stock, you can easily just put the hood in place the side mirrors, the rear taillight lenses into the grille, and our bumper. Take the body, drop it on the chassis, and you've got it all good to go. Now if you want the street machine version, you can cut the hole in for your engine, put on the hood scoop, put on the rear spoiler with the brackets, and then add in these gigantic lake pipes. Here's our nice Plymouth Duster body. And as you can see, the proportions are very nice. It's got the little vent here and the windshield wipers as well. And if we turn it up on the side, you can see the beautiful door handle in place. Now I did, I do believe I cut this line down here. This is how the front fenders are actually supposed to be shaped. I think in the kit out of the bag, the line is not there. However, the door panel is and you get the nice little side marker lights on here which are quite nice. The front of the car looks good. There are locator pins and holes for the front grille and all of that jazz. You've got your gas cap here on the side and then across the back you got that nice rear lid. I do believe the duster words are on here. No, maybe not. I have sanded in here because there were some sharp lines going on underneath. There are some mold marks, but again, those could be taken out with your number 11 or number 16 hobby blade. There's nothing up in the roof headliner, which is quite nice. So nothing bad hanging down that's visible through the side windows. Now, in addition to our body, we also have the stock hood here. And if you turn it upside down, you can see the floor matting in place. There's the cutout for the bigger engine. And since I got the body here, I can easily put this in place. And you can see that the fit and finish is quite nice. There aren't any real gaps between that hood surface and the side of the fenders. So again, it, this is really nice for an AMT slash MPC kit. Here we have our wonderful chassis pan. And as you can see, you will never lose the differential in here because it's molded in place. However, this is a nice unibody construction. The only thing we're missing here is the front torsion bars which would of course be our springing for the front. Again, there's lots of nice detail in there, spare tire, as well as our gas tank. And up underneath, we do have some mold marks, but nothing too severe. Our front splash aprons are pretty basic. 
but overall this does end up looking good on your shelf. And there's our little blocks with the holes in them. You could lower the front down for a nose in the weeds look or leave it at the stock ride height. But overall this is a very beautiful and nicely done chassis underpan. Here's all the pieces that make up our grey parts trees with the exception of the interior which I'll show you guys in a minute. So here we have our exhausts and the engine parts for our big Hemi motor. Then we've got our firewall, our custom hood scoop, intake manifolds, all kinds of goodness. There's our 360 cubic inch engine on this side, the pins for the axles, our different wheels, our air cleaner, radiator support and rear axle, and everything else that makes this kit look real nice. Now bringing up these components into the camera, we can see that they are quite uh, lacking. There's no frost plugs on the Hemi, and uh, the oil pan is very smooth. Then we've got the transmission, which doesn't have much detailing in the side here. Uh, pretty soft looking, but again, I mean, eh, it's not too bad. It'll look good on your shelf and under the hood. Here's our 360 motor, and again, as you can see, the detail is quite soft. The standard transmission does not have all the linkages inside here. There are no frost plugs up the side of the engine, and again, it's very slick and basic. I do believe this comes from that philosophy back in the 60s and 70s, where it was, if it looks like it should look, then it's correct, even though it's not really correct. Actually, I think that philosophy is, if it looks good enough, then it is. And unfortunately, this doesn't look quite good enough, but it is. So there's our intake manifold again for the Hemi and our big high-rise manifold. One thing that is nice is they do have the bolts on the side, just like it would be. But again, a lot of the stuff is quite simplified and very basic. So what can you do? Now here's something that's really groovy and also a blast from the past, because I don't know if they still make these. Scale Motorsport Interior Decals. For 125th scale, these are the 1970 pattern. And again, really cool stuff. I did get them, they were $14.99, got marked down to $4.99 a long time ago, but these will dress up any interior. And now I'm going to show you the interior of this model kit with the Scale Motorsport decals installed. Now how is this for some 1970s grooviness? As you can see, we've got those decals installed on the seats. I have painted the interior white with a flat red carpet and a black console with wood grain on the center, as well as a flat black package shelf, flat black dashboard and steering wheel, and then our white seats again with that upholstery pattern on them. Now I know maybe I shouldn't have built this thing, but you can't deny that this does end up looking quite cool if you put in quite a bit of effort and use some aftermarket goodies here and there. Now what would this look like when we put our seats in? It looks pretty far out. <laughs> okay, so this is sort of what we would end up with. And again, the interior is beautiful on this. There's our dashboard with the steering wheel, and again, I did paint it. But you can see how nice the details come up with a bit of paint in there. And our steering wheel, I did try to put the little bit of wood grain right around the ring of that, which is quite an amazing feat. I even have the uh, chrome on there. But unfortunately, I do believe I lost that paintbrush that did all the amazing detail in the 2013 High River Flood. Oh, and our pedals are actually correct as well, having the three for the standard transmission, which of course is included in the kit. Now, the dashboard will go in there quite nice. Just right there. The steering wheel will come into the back. And again, you get that really beautiful looking interior. Here's our Duster Chrome components. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of great ones on here. Look at that cool grill that we got. Nice V-style front end on there. And then all the chrome bits for our big massive motor. The Dukes of Hazard style wheels. Again, you're going to have to use some black wash in there. And if you're looking for that video, it's right up top here in this little thing that's coming up. Then we've got our rear grill and our bumpers. Look at the giant lake pipes up the side. There's our Hemi headed engine. So again, you can get a nice Hemi out of this for free. And our clutch fan or the 360 if you want to have that separate. But again, chrome on this is really nice and will look excellent on your model. 
Here we have the glass for our Plymouth. And again, it's very typical for the era. You have the rear window and side windows, as well as front windshield, all connected with these runners. And then we have our red taillights in the back, which are quite nice and will pop into place. Again, red and transparent, just what you need for your kit. There are some holes in the centers just to align up with the rear grill. And there you are. Here we have our tires for our 74 Plymouth Duster. And again, this leads me to believe that these are the same kind of tires from the MPC 1975 Corvette that we took a look at earlier. But here you get your BF Goodrich Radial TAs, which are quite nice tires and have this interesting triangular type of tread pattern in there. Love these little tires. Then our Goodyears in the back, which are like the 75 Corvette ones I'd looked at earlier, which have that tread pattern. So again, I do suspect that this car earlier was an MPC kit and not an authentic AMT kit. However, there is one thing. If you do want to build this stock and you don't want to use these tires, look for wheels that are similar in height to the front wheels and substitute those in and use these BF Goodrich radial tires. You'll have a pretty stock looking car. Last but not least, we have our decal sheet, and here's the big reveal. And as you can see, we have these nice orange, black, and gray stripes. This is what the kit would have come out with in its initial run. Aha, here we have the MPC logo, so I was correct. We got the Fram decal as well as the Keystone decal. And here we have Hawaiian license plates, which is quite interesting. You don't see too many from the Aloha State. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1975 Plymouth Duster Hardtop. And if you've built this model car in the past, why not share your pictures with us over on our Facebook page? I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing of the 1975 Plymouth Duster Hardtop by AMT Ertl. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!